welcome to the fourth episode of Ask Tanya, where I ask, well, you ask me questions and I answer your questions. If you have not submitted your questions, check out the link below and I will love to present a video just like this where I'm answering all of your questions from a cosmetic chemist perspective. You guys know I don't waste any time. Let's get into the first question, which happens to be from Soom. Soom. Soom says, how to wash the hair after an oil treatment applied all over the hair. So here's the thing, if you are doing an oil rinse, technically, depending on the oil that you're using, there really should not be that much left over. So for example, when I recommend doing oil rinses, it's typically the last part of your wash day. So your conditioner is rinsed off and you are using a light oil. You don't wanna use a heavy oil, so something like grapeseed or even something like jojoba or sweet almond oil would be great to use. And you are going to rinse your hair with this oil just a little bit, you don't need a ton of it, and massage it down the length of your hair and then you're gonna rinse that out. Now, it will leave a light coating on the hair, but the whole point of that is to help to bring shine, softness, and to also lock in that moisture in addition to reducing tangles, especially when you get out the shower to detangle and style your hair. Now, if you find that doing this method is too much for your hair and it kind of weighs it down, then I would eliminate oil rinses altogether. This may be something that your hair just does not agree with and that's okay. So that's what I recommend in regards to oil rinsing. Okay, the next question is from Ms. Daynava. She says, hi dear, I would like to know which products are best for fine, high porosity, very dry hair. So that's a really great question. I recommend you check out my video I did on high porosity, holy grail products. You're going to find so many great gems, shampoos, conditioners, leave-ins, moisturizers that are designed for high porosity hair. Now, because you do have that fine hair, you can kind of teeter-totter, teeter-totter? A little bit and like lighter products because you don't want anything too too heavy so for your moisturizer and conditioner you can kind of use whatever you want but mainly for that leave-on product is where you want to be a little bit more you know cautious so using something like Ozzy Moist Miracle Curl leave-in conditioner is a gel cream so it's not too light but it's also not too heavy for your fine hair but checking out that high porosity holy grail product video I'll post it below will be a great start in regards to selecting your products best for your hair type okay the next question is from Miss Paula Paula says can I use baby oil, AKA mineral oil, as a carrier oil for essential oils like peppermint, lavender, rosemary to use on my scalp? I've heard that all vegetable oils are food for the fungus that cause some hair dermatitis and it, and I have it in some sections of my hair, so I avoid all vegetable oils like olive, coconut, and use baby oil instead, even for the hot oil treatment as the last step in wash day as you advise. What tips can you give to treat with the scalp condition. I also use Sulfur 8 and Top Brass, and my first shampoo is with Head and Shoulders. Thank you in advance. So, so to answer your question, yes. If you wanna use mineral oil as a carrier oil, yes, you can definitely do that. And I wanna say it's also non-comedogenic, meaning it's not going to clog the pores of your scalp. So that is a good option to use, especially with having subarachnoid dermatitis. As far as a natural treatment go, you can incorporate aloe vera juice, which is anti-inflammatory to help to reduce that inflammation. You can also incorporate ACV rinses as well, which can help to loosen the scales on the scalp that come from subarachnoid dermatitis. And also, I'm always gonna say this for the scalp, but changing your diet. Like, so if you can incorporate more fruits and veggies and more healthy fats like salmon and nut and olive oil, that's gonna help tremendously to change the condition that you are experiencing with subarachnoid dermatitis. Okay, the next question is from Miss Patricia, and Patricia says, hello, my question is, what type of shampoo is recommended for a sensitive, itchy scalp? So, number one, I would say you may wanna avoid sulfates. Um, I personally don't have a problem with sulfates, but because you have a sensitive, itchy scalp, you definitely wanna you know, go sulfate-free when it comes to shampoos, for sure. I would opt for shampoos that are more on the moisturizing side and also shampoos that have humectants within the first 
four or five ingredients that can be glycerin, that can be aloe vera juice, that's gonna help tremendously with tackling that dry scalp. And I'll also look for some gentle cleansing surfactants like cocoa betaine, for example. I have a whole list for you in the Natural Hair Care with some flashcards, so if you do not have that resource, definitely check it out um that's what it looks like but i have the link below for you to check out but that'll be a great resource to know what are the best gentle cleansing surfactants that you can find in shampoos that are best for your hair especially since you have a sensitive itchy scalp so that would be my recommendation for you okay the next question is from tl and tl says I'm low porosity, suffering from high growth fatigue. My old routine was protective style, moisturizing once a week, protein moisturizer, water, miel, avocado moisturizing, hair milk, sealed oil for once a week for three weeks, then protein, free water, miel, pomegranate, and honey leave-in, sealed with oil the next three weeks once a week. Change routine last March, incorporating hair grease and giving my hair a rest for moisturizers, just using oil and grease once a week. It was still breaking until I stopped using water and just used oil and grease for two weeks and once a week the breakage stopped. When I incorporated moisture back in, breakage happened again. Why is my hair breaking every time I use water or moisturizer? How do I fix it? So this is really unique. Because you have hyper fatigue, I'm pretty sure that the breakage that you are experiencing is coming from that hyper fatigue. Once you eliminated moisture and started using hair grease and oil, you're seeing that there is a lot less breakage or the breakage has stopped completely. And basically what that means is that you're giving your hair a rest so that it can build up from that hyper fatigue that it experienced, you know? So this may be a case where you may not need to moisturize your hair like every day or every other day. I would also incorporate an Apogee protein treatment as well. You may not need the two-step right now because your breakage is has stopped, but doing an Apogee two-minute reconstructorizer, which is a light conditioning treatment, would be helpful in also getting your hair back to that balance a lot quicker. So I would recommend you trying that and keep me posted and let me know how that works. Okay, the last question is from Ms. Sharon and Sharon says, can I use oils when I have dandruff? Can I get hair care methods for protein overload? So to answer your question, Ms. Sharon, when you have dandruff, you gotta be tricky with the oils because sometimes the oils with the dandruff can cause even more issues. I would recommend doing ACV rinses because ACV rinses will do a great job at removing that dandruff and getting the pH of the scalp back to a healthy environment. In regards to moisture, if you feel like your scalp is kind of dry, I would opt for a scalp serum. Pattern Beauty makes a good scalp serum. Pacifica, Rosemary, check those two out as well. And in regards to how to overcome protein overload, you want to look at the opposite, which is moisture. So you want to incorporate more moisturizing treatments, whether that's deep conditioning once a week or once every two weeks, increasing your moisturization throughout the week. So moisturizing your hair maybe once every two days. If you moisturize your hair, usually less than that. So you want to get that moisture up but you wanna find that balance as well. So to ensure that you don't go overboard, especially on your wash day when your hair experiences the most amount of moisture, you can do a pre-poo, because a pre-poo will ensure that there is a balance between the protein and the moisturization. But to overcome protein overload, you wanna focus now on moisturization. That's gonna be the key here. All right, guys, we've well, enjoyed the fourth episode of Ask Tanya. If you wanna get your questions answered in an upcoming video, check out the link below where you can go ahead and submit your question. And once your question is featured in a video, I will send you an email letting you know the date and the time so you can go ahead and watch the video. Um, if you would like to learn more about your hair from a cosmetic chemist perspective, check out these curly chemistry resources over here to get the best hair care advice from a cosmetic chemist, me your girl to give you guys some solutions concerning your hair care journey because I know it can be challenging but with these resources it helps tremendously to cut back on the time and the money that can be wasted on this journey to get you guys to some results quick fast and easy so definitely check them out if you've not done so already well, and if you would like to book a one-on-one -on -one call with me to discuss your hair care challenges I would love to create a tailor-made plan just for you to help you reach your healthy hair care goals I'll post the link below for you with more information and if you're interested in starting a hair care line, no matter where you are in the world you can connect with me one-on-one -on -one. I have a link below for you as well all right guys I love you and I'll talk to you guys soon bye